mission that God has for us to, to join him on and to stick with. And our call to worship this morning comes from uh, the book of Ezekiel. And if you're not familiar, Ezekiel was a prophet of Israel uh, during the time of their exile to Babylon. And he taught them that God's glory had, had come with them. It had left the temple in Jerusalem. It had come with them to reside with them uh, in exile. Um, and he was, he was a prophet for them at this time when they were broken and devastated. Uh, they had been taken from their homes and they were living in a foreign land. Uh, but they were unable to recognize that it was their own disobedience and idolatry that got them there. Uh, but he had a plan to melt their hearts of stone and restore healthy hearts of flesh and blood inside them um, so that he would fill them with his own spirit so that they could then be obedient to him and join him in his mission. Um, and it's at this point in Ezekiel where we hear this story of the dry bones. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, tendons and flesh appeared on them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we don't want to forget how meaningful it is that you give us personal salvation that you that you save us as individuals and bring us back to you but we want to remember that this idea of resurrection benefits the whole body all the believers together that all these promises are for us and for our hearts to be restored to you so that we together can join you on your mission and be obedient to you on this mission that takes us out of our selfishness and heartlessness into compassion, generosity, purpose, wholeness, and love. And it's not only us, again, as individuals, but it's us as a community of believers that are being led out, out of this captivity, out of this dry thirst and death, and into your love and your kingdom. Help us, Lord, as we try to join you on your mission. Empower us to be able to stay with you. Fill us with that new life. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, sadity was silent. Surely it was through the sense when as impossible I ever stopped you. Friday's disappointment, it's Sunday's empty tomb. 
Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Oh, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And this is the place make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Cause this is the sound of dry bones rattling. A Pentecostal fire is stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon. Resurrection power, it runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. Oh, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And this is the praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just as the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah, if there's anything that he can't do. Just as the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden, what happens when God says to move? I feel him moving it now. I feel him doing it now. I feel him doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. This is the sound of dry boards rattling. Oh, this is a praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Cause this is the sound of dry bones rattling. And Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds. And nothing I desire compares with This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. 
This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I am dead before you. And I without you This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very words spoken to me. And I, I'm desperate. Father, we thank you for this opportunity where we can prophesy and be prophetic with what we sing. Lord, we want for your spirit to breathe life in us, to revive that fire for you. Help us, Father, to be resilient, not on our own, but with you. Father, we pray that as we allow this space for 
your people to speak of your faithfulness and your strength and your grace and your mercy. May we have open hearts for your grace to be at work for those who hear. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, family. Today, um, as we began last week, we started a series on resilience, on how to endure well during seasons of difficulty, seasons of challenges that um, we have to face um, and can't just run away from. And we are inviting different um, people from our community to share their experience of enduring well during this season as they hold on to God. And last week we heard from Christopher Bullock and what a powerful testimony of resilience, of understanding that adversity doesn't mean the absence of God, but you can still find the presence of God in the midst of all the challenges that we face um, every day. And today we get to hear from Gina Silos. Um, Gina is one of our heroes who work in um, in the hospital, in the ER department more specifically. And so we're very excited to hear what she has to share with us today. So, Gina? Thank you, Pastor Emmanuel. Mm. Good morning. Uh, it's been eight months since COVID-19 pandemic started. I am physically tired and exhausted, but hopeful that we can continue to live and adjust to a new normal lifestyle. Romans 12.12 12 says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. This is my everyday lifeline. Is year 2020 great for me? Not really. My dad passed away at the beginning of the year. Then COVID-19 pandemic evolved and made it worse. It interrupted my grieving moments. After the memorial celebration, as Melzer and I was about to come back to the United States, a volcano erupted resulting to flight cancellations uh, back to the United States. We were stuck in the Philippines for another week. But God is so good in turning unpleasant situation better for me because while we were still there, my mom and my niece's son got sick and I was able to care for them And finally, after a week, both recovered from their illnesses. And I was happy that this disaster happened while we were still there. Melzar got a chance to reschedule our flight back to U.S. I just want to be home. I just want to be home and back to work because I was worried that I might lose my job if I will miss so many days of work. I'm worried about our bills we have to pay. I'm worried about other obligations for my kids' school. I cannot do anything about it. All these were beyond my control. I was trying to manipulate the situation by thinking of flying back to the United States um, on a different route, but God didn't let me. He was in control this whole time. 
And finally, we were back to United States. The trip was uneventful. I was happy to be home with my kids. And then I started my work day after we arrived. Jet lag has no room for me. My mind is telling me to just get up and keep going. The first three months of this pandemic was very stressful. The first day at work, I was reading my emails. We have a lot of education coming up about COVID. We have some training going on. I was scared. I was scared about my personal health dealing with this virus. I go to work feeling scared and go home in fear of possibly bringing the virus home with me. I was getting paranoid about a lot of things. But talking to my family about the seriousness of the virus and less news watching tend to ease my anxiety. But just a little bit. But letting God take control of the whole situation was a smart thing to do. Over time, things becoming easier for me. Living in fear is not fun at all. This pandemic experience definitely changed my routine in life. Social isolation was hard. Not having a weekly small group was strange but I never felt alone, thanks to the amazing technology. A simple text messages and phone calls from friends. I am blessed to have a very supportive family and friends. Without God in my life, I am nothing. Without my loving family and community, I'll be socially isolated. Life will be hard without this too. But whatever situation you are in, always remember to hang on to God. Let him be the center of your life. And connect with him at all times. For blessings comes after obedience. I'd like to share the Bible verse from 2 Corinthians 6.4. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. Thank you. God bless you. Do what is right and be safe. Thank you, Gina. We're going to take some time to pray at this time for Gina. Um, it's always emo emotionally moving when you reflect and you revisit the things that we've had to endure and realize that we didn't have to endure it on our own, but God was always able to be there to sustain us through some of the most um, scariest moments of our lives and doubtful moments of our lives and yet we're still here we're still here in the presence of our families around us in the presence of those uh, whom we love but there are others who are not as fortunate as we find ourselves in at this moment um, so I want to continue to lift in prayer those um, who are still trying to navigate um, the complexity of of this pandemic. And not only that, but on top of that, we're dealing with fires across the West Coast. Um, and we continue to see how devastating that is. Um, and we are starting to see now more and more how this prolonged time 
of um, quarantine or social separation has caused um, some difficulties in our mental health and to continue to lift that too in the presence of God. And I want you to join me to pray for these things and intercede and call on the name of God that he may show his faithfulness, his goodness, his mercy, and his compassion for us. So let us bow and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Gina's life and just the continued work that she does um, in the hospital, in and out. Father, for her and for all those health workers, Father, who um, still understand the complexity of um, having so many protocols and so many regulations and still serving with such compassionate heart. Lord, we pray for your continued protection over her and over her family, Lord. Um, we ask, Father, that you continue to guide her uh, fearlessly, Father, as she clings on to you and stands on you and on your truth. We pray for the family, Father, as I'm sure they worry about their mom every day. But, Lord, um, you are in control. You are in control of every breath that we have and every step that we take. And, Father, we want to just lay it all in your hands and have faith. And I just pray for that faith to continue to grow in her life and her family, Lord. I pray that you continue to bless them with um, that boldness, Lord, that says, my God is with me. Lord, I just pray as well that you continue to provide the needs of her family here and far. Um, losing people, even in the midst of this um, trying times, is, it makes grieving so much harder, Lord. And I just pray that as we continue to grieve, Lord, that we continue to see the hope that we have in you. So bring peace in the midst of her family and her extended family, Lord. Um, and just ask, Father, for your mercies to continue to shower their lives, Lord. And we pray for our brothers and sisters and just our neighbors um, who are going through so much uncertainty right now, people who have had to evacuate, people who weren't able to make it out, people who've lost years of building their homes. Father, we pray for those who are suffering so much loss during this time. We don't know where to even begin. But Lord, you have brought your people together before to lift each other up. And I pray, Father, that you do that again. That during this time where we can be so divisive, Father, that we can show the opposite and be so united to help those who are losing and lost so much. Thank you for your protection for those who um, we're able to evacuate in time, Lord. And we just pray as this fire continues to ravage through so much of our landscape, Father, that you keep those protected. Father, we ask as well for those who are not feeling well during these times, emotionally, physically, mentally. Lord, it's not easy um, to overcome illnesses and to try and deal with different um, disabilities, Lord. And we just pray for your grace. We pray for your healing. We know, Father, that you still heal miraculously. And so we pray for healing in the name of Jesus, those who are praying with me right now, Lord. You know what they're going through. You know their illnesses. You know, Father, every single cell in our body. Our healer, we pray for healing for our nation, for our country, healing of the heart, healing of the mind, and healing of just our community. Father, we also pray uh, to see your work continue in us as we bear witness of your faithfulness and your work in our lives and in your, and your goodness. Father, we ask that you continue to watch over us as you lead us gracefully in your path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
So we continue uh, with our teaching series on resilience and uh, learning to endure well during these trying times. And we began talking about resilience as an idea of toughness, being able to bounce back from difficulties and quickly and elasticity, just the ability of even though we're bent in so many shapes and in so many ways, we're able to regain our shape. And we began talking about how truth is so essential for that resilience to take uh, place in our lives. It's so important to stick with the truth when trying to build up resilience in our lives because it's not a secret that when you're facing adversity, that when you are facing difficulties, that when you're fe- facing challenges and failures and disappointments, lies come along with it. So when you're facing failures, there's going to be lies that are going to say, you are a failure. You are not enough. So when you're facing with disappointment, lies are going to come with it and going to say, you are a big disappointment. You are not good enough. Lies will be present, no doubt, in any moment of our lives when we face challenges, when it stops us, when it makes us think, when it, when it makes us doubt. But walking with Jesus proves otherwise. Therefore, we stick with the truth. We stick with Jesus, who is the truth, and has defeated every lie, even the lie that says death is the end. And we know that is not even true. John 14, 6, and we read this again when Jesus answered and said in 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So he is the truth in the sense of this is how we find our reconciliation with God. This is how we find meaning and purpose in life. This is how we find abundant life that God has planned for us from the very beginning. And we can continue, though, to build up resilience in our lives by also sticking with something else. So apart from truth, we're going to learn today how to stick with the mission. Now, you have to know what the mission is first. The mission was very simple in the beginning of our early church history and remains simple to this day. In Acts chapter 1, 15, it says that there were about 120 people waiting obediently to Jesus' instruction before he went up into heaven. Um, He would leave, but he promised that he would soon return. And in the meantime, they would receive help and power from the Holy Spirit to continue with the mission. And so they're wondering, what is this mission that God has for us? And that's where we go to Acts chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. If you follow along in Acts chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, it says the following, Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by His own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You will be my witnesses. The mission, very simple. You have to be a witness. And sure enough, the Holy Spirit comes uh, one day as they're gathered in the same place again and, and there's this big rushing wind and all of a sudden they're filled with the Holy Spirit and Peter, standing with the other apostles, is the first one to stand up as a witness before the multitude. And what is he going to witness? He's going to witness truth. He's going to witness that Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. And there is no other way to the Father except through Jesus. And so that day, it says, as he stood up and took hold of that mission and said, this is my mission, and became a witness, 3,000 people were baptized. 3,000 people (laughs) through one witness. Acts 2.41 says like this, those who accepted Peter's message were baptized. God brought about 3,000 people into the community on that day. 
Let me emphasize that again. God brought about 3,000 people into the community on that day. We have a mission, but you have to understand this is God's mission. God is behind this mission. And we are given purpose through this mission as God says, I will make you part of this. When you believe in something wholeheartedly, it shapes your purpose in life. They believed that Jesus would return. It shaped their daily routine. Every day they woke up, today could be the day that Jesus returns. And they did not waste a second to go out and be a witness. They believed this wholeheartedly, and it shaped their purpose. They believed Jesus is truly the anointed Savior, and it shaped their purpose. They believed Jesus could set them free, that Jesus could still heal hearts and lives and relationships. And it shaped their purpose. They believe Jesus is the Son of God. And it shaped their purpose. They believe in the grace and the love and the forgiveness of God. And it shaped their purpose. Their purpose was to be a witness of what they wholeheartedly believed. One of our biggest needs as human beings is finding a sense of purpose. Finding a sense of purpose. Give someone a sense of purpose. And all of a sudden, the circumstances of life are redefined by that purpose. And so we're able to interpret and reinterpret in order to make sense of how that can help us build up the purpose that we have in us. Take away purpose from someone and it's one of the saddest things to see. When someone lives a life without purpose, all of a sudden, the circumstances of life, what it does is just creates a bigger void or allows you to see more clearly the emptiness of the lack of purpose. But these disciples, possessing a mission larger than them, larger than their daily lives, are about to face some difficult challenges and having to endure some very life-threatening moments as well, but never facing them alone. Because once again, who is with them to empower them? The Holy Spirit. And so one day, Peter and John are on their way to the temple, and they're witnessing as usual. Uh, every opportunity they get, they're witnessing. And this time, uh, they are able to witness through a miraculous healing of a man who was crippled from birth, it says, and is now 40 years old. So you have to imagine this man is known throughout the community. Like everyone knows the man who was crippled from birth. He's lived 40 years like that. And then all of a sudden comes Peter and John and says to the man, get up and walk. This obviously attracts the attention of more people than they wanted to. But what do Peter and John do? You guessed it. They witness. They witness and take this opportunity to say, hey, we have a mission, and this is great. This is an opportunity to continue to be a witness. But it also gets them into trouble by those who still opposed Jesus. And so they are sent to prison because of their witnessing. The next day, they stand before the council, it says, to see what to do with these men. And here's what, you know, just surprises me. <laughs> it says, but the council was caught by surprise. And we're going to read into this in Acts 4, 13 through 14. Acts chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. It says, the council was caught by surprise by the confidence with which, with which Peter and John spoke. After all, they understood that these apostles were uneducated and inexperienced. They also recognized that they had been followers of Jesus. However, since the healed man was standing with Peter and John before their own eyes, they had no rebuttal. They couldn't say anything because proof was right in front of their eyes. The power of their witness was right in front of their eyes. 
they later are released and demand. And that's all they could do. And this is the funny part. It's like they, that's all they could do, just demand and say not to speak and teach about Jesus anymore. Just stop being a witness. Please, just stop. I don't think they say please, but just stop. But you guess what happens next? They can't stop. They can't stop. Even though they had been in prison, even though they know that there is a group of people, groups of people who will continue to breathe behind their backs and breathe down their necks, they can't stop. The mission hasn't changed. Yes, they have to endure some obstacles, but you are about to see resilience from these disciples rather than quitting or complaining or whining. In Acts 4, 23, 31, they go back to their community. And this is what it says. I love this passage in Acts 4, 23, 31. It says, after their release, Peter and John returned to their brothers and sisters and reported everything the chief priests and elders had said. They listened. Then lifted their voices in unison to God. Master, you are the one who created the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. You are the one who spoke by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers gathered together as one against the Lord and against his Christ. Indeed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with Gentiles and Israelites, did gather in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and plan had already determined would happen. Now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with complete confidence. Stretch out your hand to bring healing and enable signs and wonders to be performed through the name of Jesus, your holy servant. After they prayed, the place where they were gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking God's word with confidence. They haven't lost sight of their mission. They regroup. They redefine and reinterpret what just happened to them in light of the unfolding mission of God for his church for his people and understand all of a sudden that hey this is what jesus warned us about this is what jesus told us would happen this is what jesus told us to expect and so their confession is what brings me comfort and says now lord we know what we're about to face we've just tasted a little bit of that we know what is to come we know what we must endure so now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servant to speak your word with complete confidence. Resilience. After they prayed, the place where they were gathered, it says at the end, was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking God's word with confidence. They go out and keep witnessing that Jesus is life, that Jesus is the truth, that Jesus is the way to the Father. Friends, it doesn't matter if some outside group or person all of a sudden demands or tells us, and that's sometimes all they can do, demand that you can't meet here or you can't meet there or you can't meet anywhere. You can only meet in 10 you can only meet in 20, or you can only meet in 100, or even if it came to that point where you can't meet at all, which is the reality in so many places around the world today. My witnessing isn't null. My witnessing isn't worthless because of some outside demand. The mission doesn't change, and my purpose here in this world doesn't change. Just because the council told Peter and John, you have to stop what you're doing, didn't make their witness null, didn't make their words worthless. They continue to witness, and they continue to witness God's grace as so many more people came and come, 
at the feet of Jesus to find life, to find purpose, to find healing, to find forgiveness, to find restoration, to find reconciliation, to find freedom. If anything, when people try and contain us, we find even more ways to be free, to be a witness in this world. Our prayer of resilience should be the prayer that we just read today. Lord, now, with things going on, enable us, enable your servants to continue to be a witness and speak your word with complete confidence. With complete confidence. So I stick with the mission. I have a purpose. But resilience is more than just the mission itself. Resilience, it's about the mission and knowing that God is behind the mission. It's about knowing how the mission ends. It's about knowing that my salvation and my reconciliation with God was and is part of God's mission. And I'm only given one lifetime to be that witness within God's mission. So I invite you, I invite us to endure this season together well as we stick with the truth uh, of what we find in God's word that is life for us as we stick with Jesus, but also as we stick with the purpose that God has given us as he calls us to be a witness in this world and is part of God's mission. Things around us may have changed drastically, but why we're here today hasn't changed our mission one bit. Today, I'm a witness of God's faithful goodness in my life. Today, I reflect Jesus in everything I do to those around me. Today, we continue to lead people to Christ. We continue to make disciples. Today, we continue to learn how to love all people. Yes, even the difficult ones. But we love and embrace all people. And if I am granted tomorrow, if I am granted a tomorrow, tomorrow I shall continue to stick with the mission and continue to be a witness of God's faithfulness and love in my life. And that's my purpose every day as a pastor, but as a father as well, as a son, and just simply as a child of God who witnessed the greatest love in his life when Jesus came into my life. Know your mission. Know your mission. Stick with that mission. And just understand that you have a purpose. You have a purpose in life. And it's bigger than all the minor purposes that we can acquire through our lifetime. Like this is an eternal one that we get to see unfold in heaven. So as we try and think, why are we here? Why through this? Why through so many different valleys? We still have a purpose. We still have a mission. And I pray that we live with this in our heart and in our minds and in our lives. Not give up. To continue to be resilient. A church. Not this building. Not, you know, this because this doesn't move anywhere. But a church that continues to move through all places and reflect that resilience that we have seen through Scripture and through this day as God is behind the church. And I pray that we can find that and live by that with the help of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can regain our shape and our form as a church. Father, sometimes we have let a building shape your church. Sometimes we have let an infrastructure shape and form your church, but Lord, it was never meant to be that way. It was always your purpose and the Holy Spirit to shape your church, that it may be 
a witness of your great love, of your truth, of the way and the life that you only can provide to the Father. We thank you, Father, for giving us part of that mission and purpose, Lord. We take hold of that purpose. We cherish it. We honor it, Lord. And we want to be faithful to it. Help us not forget that there's a purpose for us every day we wake up. And you are behind that. And you are for it. And you will help it see, succeed. So help us, Father, to join that, to be part of that, to uh, just make it our own and be able to live it out in our lives. We pray, Father, for resilience for your church as they face, as it faces um, just so many challenges today. And we pray for the pastors and the leaders, Lord. We just ask, Father, for resilience for just our community, Lord, a community of faith everywhere across this world to continue to stand up and hold on to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as you go out through this week, um, just remember, we have truth that can sustain us. We have a mission that gives us purpose. Let us find resilience in that. And I hope to see you next week as we continue to dive into this. But as you leave, I leave you with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of our Father, and may the communion of the Holy Spirit lead you tenderly throughout this week as we follow his presence. Hope you have a very blessed day.